by my actions, I'm defined by the words I speak, uh, the way I behave towards people, uh, the way I address issues which are relevant in our society. Fatma Karume is a Tanzanian lawyer who is fondly known by those from her country as Shangazi Wataifa in the Swahili language, which in English means the aunt of the nation. Many in her country admire her zeal, grace, an ability to defend human rights to the point of sometimes putting her life at risk. I have somebody who um, does exercise with me so, because recently I decided to sort of improve my health and exercise and so on. And he, I was grateful to him because he was honest with me. He said to me, you know, Fatma, I really, really like you and I admire you. But if you'd asked me to train you um, last year during Magufuli's life, I wouldn't have come to train you. And I said, why? He said, because I'd be scared. Not because I don't like you, but I would be scared of being impacted by um, your beliefs um, and, and being affected by the government because you're obviously being surveyed. This is the story of Fatma Karume, a lawyer, mother of two, sibling, wife and daughter of the first family of Zanzibar. But more than this, a fearless, articulate and unapologetic human rights defender. Fatma comes from the family of the revolutionary leaders of Zanzibar. Her father is Amani Abed Karume, who was Zanzibar's former president from 2000 to 2010, under the ruling party Chama Chama Pinduzi. Her grandfather, on the other hand, is the late Abed Amani Karume, who was the leader of the Zanzibar Revolution and the founding president of Zanzibar. He held the presidential seat from 4th August 1965 to 7th April 1972, when he was assassinated. Abed Karume was also the first Vice President of the United Republic of Tanzania, with the late President Mwalimu Julius Nyerere of Tanganyika as President. Named after Mama Fatma Karume, her paternal grandmother, one will say that much of who Fatma Karume is today has been born from sitting under the nurturing hands and intellect of the revolutionary leaders of Zanzibar. Today, she is a distinguished advocate in her country, Tanzania, and has a track record of representing highly politicized cases. Born on 15th of June 1969, Fatma's education background started when she left her country at a young age for the United Kingdom to obtain her primary, secondary, and eventually university education. She studied law at the Strasbourg University in France and Sussex University, where she obtained her Bachelor of Law, then in 1997 graduated from the London School of Economics with a Master of Law. In my journey as a lawyer, um, it's been a long journey. I mean, it's been a journey. Uh, I started uh, at law at school. Uh, when I was at university, I think, in 1988, when I first started university. So it's a long journey, 1998 till now. Despite her international education, perfect British accent, and promising international career, Fatma chose to return home to Tanzania and eventually ended up in her career as a senior partner and head of litigation at Ema Advocates. She was known for decades as one of the most successful corporate lawyers in Tanzania. My understanding about how the law actually is integrated into every single day life has made me 
much, much more compassionate, I believe, um, with respect to people who are less fortunate, people who have, have fallen on hard times, particularly legal, legal hard times. And I've also been much more understanding about things like, for example, uh, the rights of young girls who get pregnant to go back to school. It's really a wide understanding of the law and people's rights that has made me truly appreciate why it's important for young girls who get pregnant in Tanzania to return to school. Sasa msajili kabla hata kuipokea kesi anasema hii kesi haina ushahidi wa kutosha. Fatma represented several international companies in Tanzania through her law firm Ima, including UK-based Barrick Gold that was embroiled in a row with the Tanzanian government over alleged cheating on the content and amount of mineral concentrates mined and exported by its subsidiary Acacia Mining. It was in light of such an outstanding career that Fatma decided to take on the defense of opposition lawmaker Tundulisu. Her seemingly perfect life was, however, shattered on 26th August 2017, when her law firm's offices were bombed. On September 7th, 12 days later, her friend Tundulisu was gunned down in Dodoma, in front of his apartment. He survived after a long, painful recovery in exile. These incidents thrusted Fatma into a completely new role. I think um, fear is normal. And people who are courageous are not less fearful than anybody else. But the difference, I think, between courage and um, and cowardice is not the fact that you don't feel the fear, but it's the ability to conquer your fear. In 2018, she emerged victorious in the Tanganyika Law Society presidential election held in Arusha, having defeated three other contestants. Her appointment meant that she became the second female president of the Bar Association of Mainland Tanzania in its history. Fatma grew further in her legal profession to become a fierce defender of the rule of law, fighting for the abolishment of the non-bailable offences in Tanzania that so many businessmen, politicians, even journalists and activists like Eric Kabendera and Tito Magoti jailed and held in remand indefinitely, awaiting trial for months, even years. When she was president of the Tanganyika Law Society, and even after her term was over, she remained vocal against the director of public prosecution, Biswalu Mganga. He had been acting legally for a prolonged period of time, abusing his position in office as the DPP, uh, by um, accusing people of um, non-bailable offences, which are contrary, really, to the Constitution. They're contrary to um, the... Uh, our international obligations, but we still have them on the books. And once you're accused of these offences, just an accusation bars you from ever having bail or applying for bail. Now, I was very critical with respect to the uh, with, with respect to the DPP because he would charge people on politically motivated charges on non bailable for non bailable offences. He would then have no um, evidence whatsoever to prosecute the case, and the cases would remain in abeyance for periods of nine years. And he, he would go to court every two weeks and say investigations are incomplete. Whilst people just remained in prison, remanded in prison without bail for periods of up to nine years. This for me was unacceptable. It was an unacceptable abuse of his position and office, and an unacceptable abuse of people's rights. She was determined to defend human rights and remained a vocal critic of the late president, Magufuli. 
one of her many grievances with the former head of state was banning teenage mothers from attending school. She says her legal background was key in helping her fight for the rights of the girls. Magufuli comes into power. He stands up and he says he will not allow girls, school girls, these are 13, 14, 15 year olds who are impregnated um, to go back to school after they've had their children. He says schools are not for mothers. Schools are, uh, are for children. And these children are no longer children. They're now mothers. Now, this is of course not true because under our law, uh, you don't become an adult until you turn 18. You still remain a child when you're under 18. Secondly, uh, a lot of these young girls get pregnant because they're raped uh, by members of family, by uh, outsiders, uh, even if they were not raped and they were experimenting, a 12-year-old, 13-year-old is experimenting and happens to be pregnant. By expelling these young girls from school, you are ensuring um, that they remain poor forever. After being a constant thorn in the side of the government through several strategic litigations, in September 20th, 2019, the High Court of Tanzania issued an order suspending Fatma from practicing law in mainland Tanzania following her submissions in the case by ACT Wazelendo political party that was accusing the late President John Magufuli of unconstitutional appointment of Professor Adeladas Kilangi as the Attorney General. The State's Council complained that the language she had used in her submissions was unprofessional and disrespectful to the Attorney General, who was the subject of the constitutional change. I had taken a case against the Attorney General um, for being uh, uh, nominated and then um, appointed as an attorney general contrary to the constitution of the United Republic of Tanzania. Our constitution provides that the attorney general has to be a minimum 15 years call at the bar. And he, if he's not a private practitioner, he ought to have been a minimum 15 years uh, in practice as a state attorney. Our Delarados Kilangi, our Attorney General, qualified for neither. He was neither uh, called to the bar for 15 years, nor was he a State Attorney for 15 years when he was appointed as Attorney General by uh, the late President Magufuli. Now, there is a reason why the drafters of our Constitution wanted an Attorney General who had been called, was a senior of 15 years school, because one, experience, knowledge, confidence, the ability to stand in front of a president and tell the president that this is the law. Um, humility, because once you've been in practice, I have to say, for over 15 years, you're also very, very well aware that um, <laughs> the more you know, that the, the more you need to learn. Um, and so, um, and the ability to, to advise, take advice, uh, to also go into conference. All these are honed skills and they take time to hone them. And uh, um, unfortunately, Adelardo Scalandi did not have these qualifications uh, and this experience. So um, when I took on the case, um, he didn't like it. He took it very, very personally. Um, and, and as a result, he, he went out of his way to make sure that my name was removed from the role of advocates. The High Court Principal Judge Eliezer Feleshi directed the Advocates Disciplinary Committee of Tanzania to conduct a disciplinary hearing and make a final determination on whether she will be allowed to practice law following the accusations of misconduct. Instead of the Attorney General actually proving uh, to the world and proving to Tanzania that he was uh, qualified, uh, he had the requisite qualifications to be an attorney general. He decided um, to attack me personally. The attorney general has targeted two other lawyers, a human rights um, advocate, um, and uh, he's targeted them personally. A year later, on 23rd September 2020, the Advocates Disciplinary Committee found Fatma Karume guilty of the alleged misconduct and directed she be permanently disbarred from practicing law in Tanzania, in what critics termed as a politically motivated scheme to silence her. 
this coming barely a day after she was sacked by Ima Advocates, a law firm she had helped to create. In a letter written to Karume, the law firm said it no longer wished to associate itself with her, that her political activism was affecting the corporate image of the organization. The decision provoked APRO. Civil society leaders, politicians and ordinary Tanzanians largely criticized the move with various international bodies such as the American Bar Association, the International Court of Justice, among others, stating that the charges of misconduct against her were inconsistent with international and regional standards. The tables had drastically turned even more against Fatma for challenging President Magufuli in court. A dictator wants to decree, wants to say, when I say you do X, Y, Z, I want 60 million people to do X, Y, Z. And that was John Pombe Magufuli. He didn't want to be subject to a higher law or um, a higher power. He saw himself as the higher power and we were all subject to him. Um, and and we, we saw how our institutions crumbled and accepted this in five years. I think it left uh, us, a lot of us, traumatized. It left a traumatized and very scared nation. In 2021, the High Court overturned the decision to bar Fatma from practicing in mainland Tanzania. But she says she still has no faith in the justice system, that she will also likely not get a fair trial. The three judges of the High Court said that um, the decision of the Advocates Committee was unlawful because the Advocates Committee um, had no jurisdiction to determine my case, given the fact that it was the Attorney General who had gone before the Advocates Committee when he had actually already complained about me to a judge. A judge had already made a decision to suspend me uh, temporarily and uh, the judge has decided that the registrar of the High Court should take me to the Advocates Committee. They hurt me illegally first time, second time, and now they're given a third time to take a shot, time to take a shot at me? Come on. I, I, I'm, uh, I mean, I, I, I think it's ludicrous. Fatma's story is just but one of the many examples of what has been termed as the abuse of power by the presidency in Tanzania. Members of the opposition party, Chedema, have not been spared either in their quest to shed light on the illegalities within the functions of the government. The party's leader, Freeman Bowe, and three others have been on trial since 2021 in an economic sabotage case that emerged after they were arrested in connection to meetings they had planned to hold on pushing for constitutional change. There are lots of people who, be, who should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Um, it's been appalling the kind of treatment that the opposition have had. Um, they have been criminalised just for being uh, members of, of the opposition. We all know about Tundalifu. He was shot, his car was shot 36 times. He, he had 16 bullets pumped into his body. Freeman Boyer's leg was broken. We really don't have a choice but to, 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 to come up with a new constitution. Constitutional reform has to take place. We cannot keep plastering over this wound, this 1977 wound, uh, that is festering there, that is creating so much injustice. I think when you look at members of the family, um, particularly uh, members of families um, of human rights defenders, I think the biggest fear is that you come to harm. That is normal because um, worldwide human rights defenders do come to harm. A 
and they are ostracized, not necessarily because what they're saying is wrong, but it's because people actually fear to even be in their vicinity because of the impact it may have on them. After having served as an advocate in Tanzania for 20 years, Fatma Karume now lives between London and Tanzania with her family. She is presently sitting on boards, including being the chair of the Centre for Strategic Litigation. She is happy to have advocated consistently for the independence of the Burr, the judiciary and rule of law during her tenure as the president of the Tanganyika Law Society from 2018 to 2019. What I have enjoyed about my profession is the fact that I have learned a lot of things, particularly how governance works within a country, the, how laws um, set up the infrastructure of a society, how they regulate a society. The only thing she says is she sometimes worries about the future of her country. She highlights that during the reign of former President John Magufuli, the economy went on a downward trajectory. Investments were not coming in. There was no creation of jobs, although government propaganda said they had created over 8 million jobs. I mean, that's laughable. They claimed they created 8 million jobs in a population of 60 million, and yet uh, <laughs> The statistics say two million Tanzanians in the period, in the five years that Magufuli was in power, two more million Tanzanians fell into abject poverty. However, she remains optimistic about the future of her country, as also that of her career as a lawyer. She hopes that one day the injustices meted on the citizens, and especially the opposition, will one day be a thing of the past, and a new constitution birthed in her country to pave way for the much desired change. The government uh, abducts people, and these are abductions from the street, and they disappear, and we start shouting about it, making noise about it, where is this person, where is this person? The police claim they don't know where the person is, but they do. And then we worry, and, and you really do spend sleepless nights worrying about somebody you may not even know but you know they've been abducted off the street and you know the government is behind it and um, you wake up in the morning and you're still making noise about this person and then lo and behold a miracle happens and the police admit that they have this person in custody and then you think, thank God, once they admit that, they can't kill him. And you think you've saved a life. My very, very good friend, Maria Sarungi, we always discuss this and, and I say to her, you know, Maria, we need to celebrate even the little, little victories because they get you to the next stage. If you do not celebrate the little victories, then you forget what you're there for and what impact you actually have. <laughs>